Hi guys, it's Majesty of Younger here with the Financial Drive Through, and it's good to be back. I've been asked by uh, people in a couple groups that I frequent to talk about trading tips, you know, setting up your accounts and how to basically stay safe in this space. And I've also decided to document my journey because personally I'm also trying to improve my own techniques and I've been learning a couple tips and tricks which I want to share to you as I document this and hopefully we can both benefit from this. Um, it is important to note that everybody's journey in trading is different and while trading is a very profitable thing, you could even use it as a hobby, a side job, or you could even replace your job, which is kind of where I hope to get to at some point. It is also good to maintain a winning mind frame because that is essential to your success. You have to be ready, you have to pace yourself, you have to be diligent, and you have to be willing to learn the tips and tricks that we're going to be talking about today. Now that said, let's get started. Let's drive through. So I'm going to be focusing on Binance as my exchange of choice for this tutorial. Uh, Binance is currently undisputedly the leading crypto exchange in the space and so it makes sense to use it as our focus, right? Now here you can trade Bitcoin, Binance token and hundreds and hundreds of uh, other cryptocurrencies in minutes. And uh, this is basically what the site looks like when you come to it the first time. Uh, so for starters, I'd like to talk about simply getting registered. So if you come over to this register tab over here and you click on it you should be taken to this other page where you can create a free account now basically it's um, the same kind of information that you would put if you had to register on any sites whatsoever also you should note that the steps that you take to register on this site apply to any other crypto exchange whether it's luno bitrex heat btc bitmex coinbase doesn't really matter the same process applies because all they do is that they usually check for the same basic information your email your password uh, some places might ask you who referred you if that's um, there and then Binance has a disclaimer that needs you to be over 18 years old and you have to agree to their terms of service now they all usually collect the same basic information like I said and depending on the amount of information that you give them they would unlock more features and more services to you now you should also note that certain decentralized exchanges don't require you to provide any information to get started and a good example is at finex trustless right this is what the site looks like you can pretty much come over here and start trading right away without any information but we'll touch on this subject much later in the future this isn't exactly the focus our main focus right now is in creating an account now because i already own a binance account i'm just going to come down here and log in now our key aim here is showing you how to get your two-factor authentication. I've clicked on the login page and my email and my password has been populated here by my password manager. I personally use LastPass and I strongly recommend them. I find they're very good, quite secure and uh, I'm going to put a link to uh, it in the details section of the video so feel free to check it out. Um, now if you already have if you happen upon this page when you haven't registered, obviously you can come back down here and click on register. But the main thing to note is that simply putting in your password and your email is really just like your first level of authentication. Two-factor authentication is adding an extra layer of security to your account to make sure that nobody can actually just enter your account without your permission. And so I'm going to demonstrate it right now. If I click on login, it tries to verify it. Now, Binance has a puzzle that they put to make sure you're a human being because apparently people, you know, can program bots and AIs and stuff to try and hack in. And you can see it brings me to my second um, authentication. Now, I've already set this on my account because I've been using this account for some time. Um, in your case, if you just registered your account, you should be directed straight into the platform. So I'm going to be working this backwards since I've already done this and I'll show you how to do it yourself. Okay, so first of all, because I use Google Authenticator, I have to open the app up on my phone and put in the code that I get. Now I'm going to put this code in directly in front of you because, well, uh, the way Google Authenticator works is it creates a code every 30 seconds. And so the next time I have to log into this account, I'm not going to require the same code. So there's no point you know, hide in this part from you. And so there we go. Put that in and once you put it in, it immediately recognizes that the code is valid and it takes you straight into the account page. So over here we could see I'm back on the same page except that now 
I have my information put out on this side because I've been logged in. Binance recently just um, revamped their website. So if you're an old user and I don't know why an old user will be watching this video in the first place, but okay, thank you. If an old user happens to prefer the old website or if you just wanted to check it out just, you know, for awareness sake, uh, you could click on the old website link over here and that will take you back to it. So next up, I'm going to take you to the accounts page itself. And the idea is we're going to try and set up our two-factor authentication together. Okay. This, once you click on your account, it takes you to a uh, homepage, pretty much your dashboard where you can see your balance. You can see future announcements. You could actually see a distribution of your portfolio, how many devices you've used to log in. If you have any open orders, your trading level. If you remember early on, I said, when you provide additional information, new features are open up to you. This is still a fairly new account, even though I've used it to do a couple of trades and I've just had no interest in upgrading the account yet. So I am still on VIP level zero. You can go to VIP one and more if you keep going down. Now there's also a beginner's guide to getting started with Binance. Some of you might find some value in checking this out. Others might be in more of a hurry to get started and may want to figure things out the hard way. It depends. Like I said, everybody's journey is different. And so I encourage you to try things out, find out what exactly works for you. Now you can see over here that I have my two factor authentication already enabled because like I said, I've been using this account for a while. I also have an anti phishing code and uh, you could also see you could turn on your withdrawal whitelist and also verify your identity, but we're jumping the gun. Let's go over to security. And over here, this is where we see the different levels of security, which is kind of our focus of today. So there is identity verification where you verify your identity and that is going to take you through a whole process where you have to provide some information about yourself, your address, um, and you know, Binance is going to verify that information and use it to further secure your account. Our interest today is on 2FA and there are different ways you could do that. One, they recommend YubiKey. I personally have not used YubiKey before, so I haven't set this up. What I did do was set up Google authentication with the Google authentication app. As you can see, mine is already enabled. So that's why here the option is disable. If this is your first time doing it, you'll most likely see that yours allows you enable it. And if you do click on enable, you're going to be prompted to download the Google authentication app, which after you've done that, you would then have to pair a QR code to what Binance will provide for you. And that way you can actually link both accounts together and then receive login uh, codes that change every 30 seconds, like I mentioned earlier. And that way you can always have this as a prompt whenever you're trying to log into your account. Now, if someone were to try and get into my account, they would need my email, they would need my password, and they would also need my phone to access my Google authentication app, which is also equally secured on my phone as well by other prompts, because I mean, security is as important as it should be, especially when you have money involved. Now, another method of two factor authentication is SMS authentication. And this is where you pair your phone number with your account. So the general idea is you would receive a text message if you try to log into your account and, and you would need to input that code that you get by text into Binance to log in. Now I strongly, strongly do not recommend that you use SMS authentication because it is quite unsafe. Uh, while yes, it is still two factor authentication and another level of security. It's not so difficult for hackers to actually hack into your phone and get your number and get access to your text messages and all that. And just to describe this, I'm going to show you something over here. This is an article that was published sometime in 217 and it's titled, this is why you shouldn't use text messages for uh, two factor authentication. Now, apparently some researchers had come together and shown how to hijack a text message. And there is a nifty video over here where they show how a Bitcoin wallet was hacked through SMS interception. So I'm not going to play this video right now, but I am going to link it in the detail section of the video. So, so I do encourage everyone to take the time to actually watch this and just see exactly how it happened and why this is so unsafe. Now, in this case, they were hacking Coinbase and it looked like a vulnerability on Coinbase. But the real weakness they said was that it was in the cellular system itself. There are numerous ways to do this. And trust me, people who want your money will take the time to do it. So going back to it, right? 
This is where you should probably download your Google Authentication app. There will be a link in the details section of the video. You can find it on your phones in the App Store or in the Play Store. I mean, it is there for you to get and it's really safe. It's it might seem annoying because in case you are the type who has to step away from your system frequently, you would have to do this repeatedly, right? But I mean, I cannot stress enough how important it is to actually secure your funds this way. If you found this video helpful or you have any thoughts on Google authentication or any other ways you could actually secure your account, feel free to drop me a comment in the comment section. I look forward to reading about everything and I hope that this does add some value and help keep you safe as you journey along with me in the crypto space. Once again, my name is Majesty Ibianga and this has been another edition of the Financial Drive-Thru. Thank you.